This video is an assignment for sociology class, Body and Society at San Diego State University. The purpose of the assignment is to help inform us on key issues related to sociology of the body. The positions being advocated may not necessarily reflect the opinions of the students developing this video. Today, my classmates and I will be talking about kids, toys, and entertainment and the effects that it has. My topic is on the lack of diversity in kids' toys and entertainment. Um, so what does diversity look like in toys? Um, that could be anything from showing different skin conditions to different disabilities, um, different backgrounds, body image, um, all of that. And so obviously growing up, um, kids like in my age group and older were used to kind of the standard blonde, blue eyed, white Barbie doll with a very unrealistic looking waist. Um, as you can see, one of these pictures kind of compares the waist of a Barbie to a normal person. Um, and this was also the same with guys too. Um, they often were very chiseled, very unrealistic body images. And then in the top left, you can kind of see a more realistic one. And crayons on the left is kind of shown like the first box of crayons that they came out with, obviously not um, very representative of um, darker skin tones. And now they have more um, darker skin tones, but obviously as a child, um, you're coloring, you're learning color shapes. It's very important to be exposed to all different types, especially if you are of a darker complexion to see your skin tone represented as you're growing up um, is very crucial. And so also Band-Aids not too long ago actually came out with their um, true color skin tone bandages and you can see um, picture of a man trying it on, it blends in with his skin tone and all the comments on Instagram are saying like, this took so long, like finally, um, about time. Um, and people are super supportive, but they're also giving criticism to the fact that this should have been, you know, a long time ago that they changed that. And also with cartoons and children's books, I found this illustration in 2018 that shows 50% um, were white and 20% were of animals or other, and then 10% African American and so on and so on. So you can see that big um, discrepancy in those percentages that really are crucial as a child to see someone that looks like you in um, the things that you watch, especially. Um, so obviously I included Doc McStuffins and The Proud Family that are two shows that kind of are highlighted as um, representation of African-Americans. Um, and then makeup and undergarments as girls get older and they go through puberty and they're you know, trying on makeup and looking for bras and underwears that, you know, fit their skin tones. Um, you can see on the top left corner, um, the makeup swashes. Um, there's only two that kind of are darker skin tones. And then there's so many that are shades of um, things that would fit into like white skin tones. Um, Brands have done a lot better job of including um, a lot of different shades in like bras, underwears, you know, skims and all of that have been coming out. So this movement definitely is helping and is getting very big. Um, but how can we do better? I think it's important to note that a lot of this has to do with when you're growing up and developing and you're seeing those things. Um, so it's more ingrained in your mind. Um, obviously, as you get older, it's harder to do that. 
Um, so having open dialogue, um, respecting one another, being open, exposing your children to people that look like them, people that don't, all different types is super important um, in their learning. And so my other classmates are gonna go deeper into um, body image, boys versus girls, and all of that. So. I will be discussing issues with gender and children's entertainment and toys and how and why it affects children and their perception of themselves and society. I will evaluate issues in gender as a social construct, gender types play, portrayals of female and male roles in Disney movies, and body idioms. So why does gender in children's entertainment and toys matter? Children develop by interacting with others, watching others, and eventually mimicking others. Messages from society are communicated to children through entertainment and toys. In addition to this, it's important to acknowledge how gender and society are connected. Gender is socially constructed. Our textbook refers to gender in relation to established physiological, social, and representational differences between men and women, which are socially constructed and culturally variable. House in 46. Girls aren't born liking pink and dresses or boys liking blue and trains. Society teaches them to adhere to these gender norms. These ideas are instilled in children through play and games. Gender typed play behaviors are prevalent from when a child attends preschool and throughout their childhood. Individuals are drawn to play with others who are similar to them and compatible with their type of play. Gender specific toys as well as gender type play are heavily encouraged by parents and how companies advertise their products. This clear separation in gender type play as well as gender specific toys creates two different cultures among children. Gender type play is also directly correlated with gender roles in society today. Weissgram's research show, has shown that children are, has shown that girls are more likely to play with other girls in smaller groups and have a more cooperative play style than boys. Girls play house and play with dolls to prepare to care for children and be a homemaker, what, ex what society expects them to be. The same research shows that boys are more likely to play with other boys in larger groups and have a more rough and physical play style than girls. Boys play with race cars or a rough house, practicing their competitiveness and physicality, traits that society has placed a great value in for males. Children soak up all of these meanings in gendered play and reflect society's messages about what they should be based on their gender and what to expect from the other gender. Children look up to fictional characters like Disney princesses and princes. However, these characters convey heteronormative messages about what girls and boys should be. Most of the Disney princesses take socio-emotional roles caring for those around her, implying this is what females are supposed to do. In addition to this, most of the princesses values in their beauty while their thoughts and opinions are belittled. It is unhealthy for girls to grow up thinking that their physical appearance is far more important than their intelligence or individuality. It is also wrong for boys to learn that women's values in their looks rather than their mind. Hegemonic masculinity is extremely prevalent in Disney princes. Hegemonic masculinity emphasizes heterosexuality, assumes femininity can only exist with the presence of hegemonic masculinity and idolizes a big muscular body for men. Young boys watching these movies strive to be all of these things and often fear being ridiculed if they embrace femininity. Individuals begin reflecting these learned concepts from society through body idioms. An example is girls crossing their legs to appear small and submissive while men tend to take up more space, appearing big and powerful. This is due to what society has told them what being a man or being a woman looks like. We can also see this in posters for romantic movies. The man appears dominant and in control of the woman while she appears small and beneath him. Children notice all of these things around them and it ultimately shapes the way they view themselves and others in society. Hello, and my name is Emmanuel Lopez. Um, earlier, you could have seen from the other videos that my classmates are talking about, um, we each brought in our own perspective on how uh, toys have unrealistic uh, images and the effects of it. So from what I'm bringing is the male point of view that uh, these toys uh, bring to men and boys. Um, one of um, our, my favorite things growing up was uh, WWE wrestling. Uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is probably one of the most iconic wrestlers that we know. Um, if you look to your left, there will be um, the real, well, my bad. 
I'm looking at my left, but I have them um, kind of descriptive. Uh, one says real and one says toy. On the real side, we have Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Um, as you could tell, he has a pretty strong physique for what uh, he is um, looked at normally. On the right, we have uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, the toy. Um, if we do comparisons, you can see uh, right off the bat that the toy looks very unrealistic. Um, his abs are showing at a rate that not even the real one has those type of abs. Um, his arms are huge in the toy compared to in real life. And something that I would like to say is uh, the detail in the thighs also kind of points out how unrealistic the toy is compared to the real person. Um, when we look at things like this, especially in toys, uh, you know, as young men, you know, some of us don't really know that that's actually achievable. We just see we want muscles, we want to have a nice body, we want this, we want that, you know. Um, but in reality, you know, maybe the highest physique that we could get would probably be the actual doing the Rock Johnson type of body or, or something that's more suitable to us. Things like this um, tend to cause negative effects towards the mind of the consumer. Um, one of them that I want to talk about is called the muscle dysmorphia. Muscle dysmorphia actually is, give me one sec is an obsessional uh, preoccupation, you know, to their masculinity. I chose this picture right here of a man staring at himself in the mirror and all he sees is a scrawny guy. You know, on the right, he has uh, this unrealistic picture which says bigger is better. Um, these type of effects tend to happen to the male, um, especially because, you know, they question their masculinity when comparing themselves to toys like this or other people of a strong physique, they tend to be, you know, uh, kind of have problems with their self-esteem. They may think their penis is small, their arms are small, their legs are not big enough, they're not big enough. While in reality, they're actually pretty normal. Um, they might kind of be obsessed and kind of leave their whole social life out of the way, their whole family life out of the way, maybe their professional life out of the way. They just want to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If that doesn't help them out in the gym, then they don't want to be a part of it. They tend to push those things to the side. And one of these last effects that it also does is um, in some cases, it also leads to people using steroids. Um, steroids is a, a type of substance that helps men perform better and actually helps them get even more muscular than what they are, but it does tend to have negative effects. Um, usually it could lead to roid rage, um, you know, being addicted to this, and sometimes it just, you know, destroying their life. In reality, you know, none of us are perfect. Um, our body is our body. Uh, if you want to work out and get better at it, you know, there's nothing stopping you. You know, we, we promote that. But seeing toys like this where, you know, they have like the perfect chest, the perfect abs, doesn't help. All these unrealistic goals don't help. So that was my part of the video and what I wanted to bring up on. So thank you and have a great day.